Let's talk about missing data. I'm gonna do this video in two sections. The first half of the video is gonna talk about how to approach missing data, how to think about it, how to think about the distribution of missing data in your data set. And I'm gonna talk about five strategies that you can employ to deal with missing data. The second half of the video is gonna talk about how to use our programming to deal with missing data to apply those five strategies. Okay, let's get stuck in. I wanna illustrate the importance of understanding the distribution of missing data. And to do this, we're gonna look at a very simple data set. We're gonna imagine we're interested in the difference in the average earnings of men and women. And by the way, all of these figures are completely fictitious, right? But in this data set, there are no missing values. And so we can see that in men, the average earning is about $5,000 a month. And in women, the average earning is about 4,600, a little less. Now let's look at the same data set, but let's imagine that there is some some missing data or not available or NA. And in this example, imagine that the distribution of the missing data is random. Can you see that the average earning or the difference between men and women hasn't changed much? And this is because the missingness is random, that the missing data is evenly distributed between these two groups because of the randomness of it. If we look at another example of the same data set, and here we've got missing data that seems to be evenly distributed between the two groups, and yet in this case, there is a substantial impact on the average income between the two groups. And the reason for this is that the missingness isn't random, right? There's a pattern to it, but the pattern isn't obvious. And you sometimes need to look at the distribution of your missing data in relation to another variable other than the ones that you're actually looking at. And in this case, the data had only been collected from people living in cities, and the absence of rural data represented a systematic bias in the data set. Now, this isn't a showstopper. We can still analyze the data, but when you report the, your findings, you need to be very clear that the difference in the earning between, earnings between men and women in this data set represented urban data only, right? Now, let's take a look at the various strategies that you can employ when you're faced with missing data. Let's imagine that we've got missing data all over our data set. I'm gonna walk you through five things that you can do to deal with these missing values. The first thing that we can do is we can delete all rows with missing data. But that's gonna take out almost your entire data set, so it's almost invariably a bad strategy. Something else that you can do is you can delete just the rows where there is missing data from a specific variable. Now if you look at the names variable, we don't care too much that the, the actual names are missing because we're not gonna analyze this data by individual names, right? So our third strategy for missing data is we might want to change missing values in a particular variable to something else. And boom shakalaka, we've changed them to unknown. Or we might have the exact opposite problem, right? There is data that is actually missing, but it hasn't been identified as missing in the data set. In this case, we've got zeros instead of missing. So, we, so our, our fourth strategy is we can change values in a variable into missing data. And booyashaka, those zeros have been changed into NA or missing data. And finally, we might want to replace missing values with what our best guess is as to what that value should be. And this is something called imputation. Now there are some very clever strategies that can be applied to stick in some substitute values into your data frame. Now in the rest of this video, I'm gonna talk you through how to use R programming to deal with missing data. I'm not gonna get into the imputation side of it. That, that's gonna be a standalone video on its own. Before we start, as always, make sure that you've installed and you've called the Tidyverse package, which means that you'll automatically have access to the Star Wars data set, which we're gonna be using in this lesson. And the Tidyverse also, it gives you a whole lot of packages all built into one actually, and it gives you to, an, a, access to an expanded vocabulary within R. Okay, so very important. Not gonna get into that right now, but get into the Tidyverse, right? Let's take a look at this data set, we type in the function view with a capital V, in brackets the name of the data set we wanna look at, in this case, Star Wars, and here we go. That's the Star Wars data set, you've got access to that. I'm deliberately using a data set that you've got access to so that you can go through each step that I'm gonna show you and practice dealing with missing data on your own. Now we're not gonna work with the entire data set. For the sake of this tutorial, let's just work with name, gender, hair color, and height. So we start by telling R what object we're gonna be working with, in this case, it is the data set Star Wars, right? We use the pipe operator, that's in pink. That's the same as saying, and then, right? So Star Wars, and then we select the variables we wanna work with, right? And then let's just say view with a capital V to have a look at what that looks like. And as expected, here's a slightly smaller data set just with the variables that we want. You can see that there is missing data here depicted as NA, which stands for not available. If we, went, if we were to scroll down, we'd see that there are missing valuables in the variable height as well. Let's imagine that we're interested in the difference in the average height between males and female characters in the Star Wars universe. 
Before doing anything else, you wanna get a sense of the distribution of your missing data. Because this is a relatively small data set, we can filter out all the rows that have missing data and simply visualize and inspect that data. To do this, we use the function filter, and that will extract out only the rows that meet the criteria that we put inside the brackets, right, the arguments. Now, I wanna talk you through this code because it's not it might not be entirely obvious what I've done here. First of all, complete cases. This is a function that can be used to extract out only rows that have no missing data, right? So if ordinarily complete cases will tell you about rows where there's no missing data, we wanna see rows that do have missing data, so we put the exclamation mark in front of the words complete cases. This tells R to do the exact opposite. R will filter out only rows or cases where there is missing data. And the blue dot that you see there is that just basically tells R that we wanna use the entire data frame inside that as an argument inside the brackets. Okay, that's been piped into it. Let's take a look at what that produces. And there you go, right? So we've got no missing data in the names column. We've got names everywhere, that's fine. But for the other three, we see that there is missing data and we can see the relationship between them. But this is a relatively small data set. It's pretty easy just to visually inspect the data like we have done right here. But what about data sets that have millions of observations or rows, right? For that, we need to have a slightly different strategy. And we, there's packages within R, right? You would have learned how to install packages in R. There are packages, as you can imagine, that deal specifically with missing data. And there's one called mice, and I'm gonna show you that right now. Firstly, make sure that you've installed mice using the install packages function, and then you call the package either by, either by using the library or require function. And then you've got a, a, a function called MD pack patterns, right? That, call, that, that stands for missing data patterns. And if you apply that function to the object Star Wars, it will give you a visual representation of your missing data. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna get into the analysis of missing data in this way. That, that's a whole video on its own. But for now, I just need you to know that packages like mice and others are out there that'll help you take a closer look at the distribution of missingness, especially at large scale. Now, when we talked about the five strategies that we could apply to missing data, the first one we said is we could just, we could just omit all, all rows that have any missing data in any variable, right? So let's, sort, let's just look at how we would do that. We would use the, we would use the na omit function, right? And that would, if we did that, uh, it's pr pretty simple what would happen. And voila, all the missing data is gone. And now, while this looks neat and tidy, it's almost always a bad strategy because you've deleted any row of data that has any missing value in any variable, and it's hard to know what's been taken out. So instead of deleting all the rows that have any missing data, we might wanna drop just the rows that have missing data from a particular variable. That was our strategy number two. And to do that, we can use the drop na function. Right? And this tells R which variables to drop missing values from. And in this case, we wanna drop all the missing values from height. And let's look at what that does. Voila, no missing values in the height variable. All right, let's just have a look. This is what things did look like, right? These are the, these are the rows that had missing values in them, and if we remove them, we go back to a data set that has no missing values from the height variable. Now we wanna change the NAs in the gender to none. We're wanting to change the values inside a variable, and to do that, we use the mutate function. Now remember, mutate can be used either to create a new variable or to change the values or overwrite an existing variable, right? So in this case, we type mutate, that's the, that's the, that's the function we're using. And in the first argument, we tell R that what we'd like to change is the gender variable, right? The first argument is what it is that we're gonna overwrite, or, or it might have been what new variable we're gonna create, but in this case, we're gonna overwrite the existing variable gender. Now we need to tell R what the gender variable is going to become. And we, and we use the replace NA function, right? Remember, we're gonna replace the NA functions with something else. In this case, we're gonna replace them with none. Okay, and that replace NA function itself has two arguments. Firstly, we're going to be asking R what to look at. We're gonna say, look at the gender variable, and whenever it finds NA to replace it with none, which is the second argument. Right, let's take a look at what that looks like. And hot diggity, no more missing data in gender. It's been changed to none. Now let's talk about the exact opposite of this, right? We wanna take some given value in a variable and change it into missing data or an NA. If we use the unique function and look at the Star Wars data set and within that the hair color variable, in the console we're gonna see all the possible values that any data point in that variable might take. And notice that one of them is unknown. 
and we might consider this to be missing, right? Right, and again, we're gonna use the mutate function, right? The first argument we're gonna tell R which variable is going to change, okay, in this case, hair color, and then to tell R what the new values in the hair color variable are going to be, we use the NAF function, right? In other words, change this to NA if some sort of criteria is met. And here, the first argument within the NAF function is to tell R what to look at, right? So we're gonna say, look at the existing values in the hair color variable and change them to NA if they meet the criteria in the second argument, which is if R finds the word or the text unknown. Right, let's use the filter function to filter out only rows where hair color is NA. We can use the is NA function as an argument within the filter function. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Zippity doo da, we've got a new row added that includes a missing value in hair color that NA used to be unknown. Now let's take a look at what happens when you apply a function to a vector that has missing values. So in this case, we haven't removed any missing values. We're just looking for the average or the mean height in all of the characters, right? And if we do that, oh no, we land up with an NA returned. So clearly we can't calculate the mean if there are missing values in the vector that we're looking at. So what do we do? We simply add the argument NARM, which is NA remove, and voila, we can calculate the mean. Now stay and watch another video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and hit the bell notification if you wanna get notified of future videos. And remember, share this video with anybody else that you think might find it useful. Take care, stay well, don't do drugs, always do your best, speak to you soon, bye.